So over the past few months, we've been hearing a lot of talk about NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens or NFTs are exploding in popularity. NFTs or non-fungible tokens is gaining momentum with Twitter's Jack Dorsey, the latest to join the craze. A lot of people are curious how to make money with NFTs or if they should even get involved with NFTs. If you're in your 20s and you want to learn more, watch this video. Awesome. We are super excited for this interview today to talk about NFTs. Uh, what the hell they are. We want to learn everything about these because uh, a lot of people are talking about NFTs everywhere. Before we get started, can you just give a quick intro uh, to who you are um, and why we're talking to you today? Yeah, definitely. My name is Nikhil Mohanty. Um, I go to school at Illinois Institute of Technology. I'm a fourth year. I'm going to be graduating soon. And um, basically over the past six months or I guess eight months now, I've just been studying NFTs and really learning um, the industry and what drives the industry and I've actually been pretty successful at investing within the industry. And I'm kind of here just to kind of talk about it so that people in their 20s can understand how to make smart decisions in this industry because there's a lot of money to be made, but there's also a lot of money to be lost. So I'm here kind of just to clear the, clear whatever questions people have. Of course, I love that. Thank you. And you know, we're really just trying to educate our community. So we'll just dive right in. Um, what are NFTs? What does NFT stand for? Why are they so hot right now? and just the differences between a digital and physical asset. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just gonna break it down into the exact way that Gary Vee explained it. I don't know if you guys know who Gary Vee is. He's a famous entrepreneur. Basically, Fortnite essentially made NFTs a big thing because when you're in for like any video game that you play, you can purchase a skin and that skin costs money and people view you in a different way because you paid money for that skin. And an NFT is a non-fungible token. That's what it stands for. So it's a token that's stored on the blockchain. So a blockchain means that everybody can view it. So you own it, but everyone can view what you have because blockchains are all visible. You can see the account address and you can see what other people have and what other people own. When you own an NFT, like let's say, let's say you own digital artwork, okay? That's just an example. When you own digital artwork, everybody can see what digital artwork you have and it creates this peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So let's say I own 10 pieces of digital art, okay? And then 10 pieces of like sports collectibles. People can like go on the marketplace and buy it immediately. So it's different than a physical collectible. Because physical collectibles, you need to get it graded. You need to make sure that it's authentic. You need to make sure that people aren't scamming you on eBay and stuff like that. And with NFTs, it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. And the ownership, it just gets directly deposited in the other person's account. So NFTs are digital items that people can purchase and bid on. And there's a public marketplace where there's true scarcity because there's only X amount of items that are made and created with different NFT projects. So scarcity and having access to that item on a digital marketplace is what drives prices. And it basically creates this huge marketplace for people to interact. And it's a community essentially. I think they're hot right now because they're a new asset class, right? So five years ago, six years ago, it was cryptocurrency, right? Like cryptocurrency was a new asset class. Everybody had this sense of euphoria, right? Cause they just started dumping money into cryptocurrency, right? And NFT is a new asset class. So people are just dumping money into different projects because they think that, oh, like, I want to own this. I want to own that. So in the, one of the hottest platforms right now in the NFT space uh, is a company that you're heavily invested in and you've done very, very well on. It's NBA Top Shot. Um, it's this platform that has just skyrocketed, taken off. I mean, there's been over like I think they've said like recently over 50 million dollars in transactions just in a few weeks yeah uh, i know there's uh 200 250 and 250 wow yeah. so over 250 <laughs> million dollars in transactions just in a few weeks and just to give the audience you know a quick uh um blurb on what nba top shot is uh, it's almost like you can purchase uh digital playing cards um or these moments which of course we'd love for you to really break down you know the difference between cards and moments but um you know since using this platform you've been able to see a 1200% uh, return on your original investment. So you're very educated and doing very well within this space on this platform, NBA Top Shop. Recently, Rudy Gobert 
of the Utah Jazz uh, reached out to you to purchase one of your uh, moments or collectibles that you were able to purchase on this application. So you have um, these crazy investment numbers yeah. you've seen on NBA Top Shot. You have NBA All-Stars uh, reaching out to you to purchase and see if they can <laughs> buy moments from you. Just talk to us about what NBA Top Shot is um, and should we be interested in it? Yeah, I think an NBA Top Shot will go down as the most successful NFT um, platform. And that's mainly because I want to start out from like a broad perspective. What they did is they got an official license from the NBA and the um, NBA Players Association. Okay. And on top of that, if you look at their backing, so I'm going like even more broader, the angel investors that invested into NBA Top Shot are some of the most prolific and famous angel investors there are. That is what made me in first invest in the NBA Top Shot is I did my research and I understood, I'm like, okay. And then I, I enjoyed the concept, but sometimes the concept isn't enough. Sometimes you have to project user growth and project market marketplace sales. Some NFTs have emotional connections to people, right? So NBA players, like for example, in my background, I have an emotional connection to Derrick Rose. I don't care. He's my favorite player of all time. Like people can argue with me on that, whatever. I don't care. And when I go on NBA Top Shot, I want to own Derrick Rose moments. I want to own Vince Carter moments. I want to own my favorite players. I want to own their moments because I enjoy watching them play. And there's just a sense of fandom within that. And there's just a different connection that I personally have with those players. And that's a project that I want to invest in. So NFTs are hot because people have emotional connections to items in general. Like people like to buy things. That's just how the world works. Like people enjoy purchasing items because of like, it's either one, they make them feel better. Two, it's an asset class that they think that they'll see a return on or three, they just want a place to store their value. Like you'll see people buying jewelry, but they'll only buy like high gold because they want a place to store their value or like high quality gold. It's the same, it's, the, it's got the same idea around it. People want places to store their value, emotional connections or just purchasing items. So that's why I think the NFT class is so hot right now is because a lot of these items that are being released, people have emotional connections to. And what NBA Top Shot is, is essentially it's a player's moment in a game during um, the year, the year that they play. So right now it's 2020, 2021. So all the play, all the plays that happen, they take them and then they put them in a little video and then they mint them on the blockchain and they only mint amount, um, X amount of plays. And then after that, they get put on the marketplace for people to buy or you can buy them in packs. So why I think that this is the best and best NFT project and also why I don't think it will take over the card industry, okay? I don't think it's gonna be or, I don't think it's gonna be digital collectibles or physical collectibles. I think it'd be more like an and. So people are going to have sports collectibles in their house and also gonna have sports collectibles on their phone because what NBA Top Shot does is essentially allows you to own a play. And sometimes it's hard for people to understand because people are like, oh, well, I can just YouTube it and I can pull it up on YouTube. And that's the 15 second play that you have and you paid like $400 for it or whatever. Yeah, that's true. You are right. Like you can just pull it up on YouTube. But what people don't understand is the collectibles industry. Like the collectibles, the sports collectible industries is one of the biggest around the entire world, I believe. I think it's art, sports collectibles. And um, what people got to understand is that the NBA Top Shot creates a marketplace where people can buy and sell items, but you just got to look at the projected user growth. And there's so many users that are hopping on to NBA Top Shot and uh, because they want to own their favorite players. Like I said, NBA Top Shot has an emotional connection to users. So people want to own plays of their favorite player. And this creates a, I guess, fandom over how people want to interact online because now you can just go into like a stadium. And if, I believe in five years from now, you can just go into a stadium and people are gonna be like, oh, like, look at what I have on my phone versus like people don't want to take pictures of their cards that they have at their house. Like, oh, look at the cards that I have. Like, it's just, it creates a different experience of fandom. And like, that's what it does. And 
it's going to be able to unlock content like NFTs, NBA Top Shot, like I'm just going to say one more thing. They've been, um, the CEO is talking about how like in, because they have a license, the NBA and NBA Player Association, how in like three years from now, you're going to walk into an NBA game, but because you have this moment, you can walk into a special suite where you get special service and get food and stuff. And then you can walk out and go back to your original seats. So that's just kind of like where the future of NBA Top Shot is going to be. Okay. So why would someone want a digital asset in, instead of like the physical car? So I think that, um, like I said before, I think it's more like an and, right? I think, I think both of them are viable, but I think with digital assets, um, there's a true level of scarcity and that scarcity is what drives up prices. And that's what allows you to gain an edge over other people when you're talking about investing, right? Um, Bitcoin has true scarcity, right? That's what drives price up a Bitcoin. People can still mine it, but um, there's only X amount of Bitcoins available. Same thing with some of the, with a lot of the NFT projects. That's what is, that's why they're making the headlines, right? Because like, for example, LeBron James cosmic dunk, which is the most rare LeBron James moment you can ever have. Every single two weeks for the past two months, You've seen like a new record sale in that moment and a new record sale on the marketplace. Like right now, I think one sold for 208,000, right? And that's just because people like the idea of having something that nobody else has. That's what drives like the world in general and the collectibles industry in general. People want to have something that nobody else has. And NBA Top Shot creates levels of scarcity to where they can have something that nobody else has of their favorite player to show their true fandom towards that player. And that emotional connection is what's driving this project so fast and it's growing exponentially. So we've seen so much growth and obviously you've already seen such a large return um, just after getting started in this, um, you know, a few months ago. Now, from the perspective of someone that wants to get into NFTs tomorrow to say, um, you know, what advice would you give there? Um, of course, because you want to make sure you're not working in, off of the wrong platforms. You want to make sure that you're doing proper research. But I mean, again, like if you want to get involved in NFTs tomorrow, what advice would you give to that person? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm going to go back to what I said originally about like five minutes ago, talking about the angel investors that are making the project, the, um, the amount of user growth and the projected sales. So when you're investing in a new NFT project, you want to make sure that it's backed up by the right people. People, because what's happening right now, a lot of people are doing this. Logan Paul has made millions off of taking pictures at his house, putting them up on Rarible as NFTs. So turning them into NFTs and people are bidding thousands of dollars on it. So many artists in general, digital artists are printing money by creating NFTs and just making a whole bunch of money, but their project, they don't want it to be sustainable over the next four to five years. They just want to get their get their cash in their check for something that they did, and then they're just going to go enjoy their life. You know what I'm saying? So the number one, I think, important factor when you're investing in NFTs, make sure the person who is the head of that project has like is has a vision, has like a vision of this being used in the future like unlockable content, make sure that you're not investing into a project of a person who just wants to make a quick buck and leave. Because what you got to realize that what you pay for that NFT, you have to find a buyer. Okay. So let's say like there's this digital, there's all these digital arts that are selling for thousands of dollars every day. Okay. Now, if they're selling for thousands of dollars every day, let's say you pay $20,000 for an item. You have to find a buyer now. And if that person quits his project and his project fails, like let's say it's a digital artist, then you're going to have a really hard time finding a buyer. So I think digital art mainly is the one area where I'd be like, you have to be really careful because you can really not necessarily get, you can get screwed in a way because you've got to make sure that the digital artist has a plan for the future. Like I saw this one digital artist creating um, kind of like, a Pokemon online game, but that guy is one of the most prolific digital artists out there. He's backed by Halo, that he did The Hobbit. He did like all these crazy projects. He's one of the most famous digital artists out there, but he's trying to create something, right? And those are the kind of projects where I see 
being successful in the future versus um, just investing in digital art. So the number one thing I would recommend is looking at who's backing the project. Number two, I would recommend is, um, number two, I would definitely say is making sure that the project has a future. And then number three is Try to see if you can find something that has an emotional connection to people, all right? That's where I've done, I found the most success in general. Um, a lot of times us art, people release, like people just wanted to have it, but after like three weeks of its release date, like people are like, okay, I don't want that. Like, make sure you pick something, NFTs, make sure you pick something that has a, um, something that has an emotional connection to people. That's what I would recommend. Love those three points. Really good advice. Just because, again, there's just so much information right now about NFTs. We wanted to be able to make it just a short, condensed, yeah. uh, you know, explainer uh, to really help our community out. So really felt like we were able to accomplish that during this chat. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Michael, did you have any additional questions? No, no additional questions here. It was, it was really great to meet you.